I have not sat down to film in a really, really long time. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Wow, feels good to say that though. Woo, okay. Hi, friends, I've missed you. It's been a while and I'm going to hopefully quickly explain what has been going on. If you do not follow me over on Instagram, you should follow me over there. I'm just at Dana Pulsifer, my first and last name. And I shared briefly on where the heck I've been last week. Um, I, yeah, I really don't even know where to begin with this video. I have had a lot of thoughts. I should have written some down or just kind of made like myself an outline, but I didn't because I just kind of want to talk about how I've been feeling, how I've been feeling not only physically and emotionally, but also how the baby is and things like that. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I have been gone for pregnancy complications. So this is going to be my second trimester recap video for you guys rather than weekly videos for the second trimester. It's going to just be a recap because a lot has been going on. Um, I'm just going to share the major thing that has been going on and kind of go from there so we can move on and I can get into filming again and doing weekly pregnancy updates. I want to first state that I am feeling so much better and the baby is okay. She is completely perfect. It just took a long time to figure that out. So let's just go ahead and get started. Back when I was in or the earlier second trimester, I was talking about how I was feeling like really sick and I was not feeling well. I was very tired and just did not feel like myself, could not get out of bed, could barely stand for longer than like a minute or two. Like it was kind of crazy. And I was feeling very emotionally down. Like I, the first trimester is rough within itself. And then I felt like I had a couple weeks in the, in the second trimester and then that I felt fine. And then I started feeling horrible again. And it's just like, oh my gosh, am I ever going to feel better? Like this is crazy. And I wasn't, and I just felt off and I knew that something wasn't right. And if you go back in my videos, I did a vlog on it. I kind of even talked about it in a pregnancy update back when I was 20 weeks pregnant and about going to the doctor, trying to figure out what was wrong and having not a great experience, but pushing to make, to get more testing done because I knew something was wrong. Like the, this, I shouldn't be feeling this way. So I finally saw my OB and we decided, she said, we will get blood work done right away. Like this is my normal OBGYN and she took great care of me. She got me all the testing done. We had to get a lot of blood work done. So basically the first round of blood work that I had gotten done, it was showing that I was clearly sick, that there was something wrong with me. I knew that there was, it wasn't the flu, it was something else. So we did a little bit more testing. And then my blood levels were like super out of whack. They're like, okay, you have a virus. There is a virus flowing through you right now and we need to figure out what that is because some viruses are not safe while pregnant for the baby and can really affect and be dangerous for a baby in the womb. So we started going through all of these tests and each one was like, no, 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 which was great until we figured out which one it was. So I was, ha or I had and do have, it's still flowing through my body because once you get it, it doesn't go away, is called CMV. Now, what is CMV? A little complicated. <laughs> if you've heard of EBV, which is mono it is a form of mono but it's called cmv because it comes from a different virus family called herpes i don't have herpes i 
no sexually transmitted diseases over here. Chickenpox is part of the herpes family, so is a bunch of other things and this as well. So it just comes from a different family and we finally found out, wow, no wonder I've been feeling horrible. Basically, I've had mono while pregnant. So yeah, <laughs> and I was very relieved because I'm like, great, I know what was wrong with me. I wasn't crazy and something really was wrong. The problem that arises is that CMV is dangerous for a fetus. Now, basically we did more blood work to try and see like, when did I get the CMV? Because that is what matters. Now this blood work and testing took many weeks. So it just took a really long time, which is why I haven't been around because I just didn't have any answers and wanted to give you guys answers. And that's just what made me feel comfortable. And I'm actually a very naturally very private person. Being open and sharing every little bit of my life is not something that I normally do. I like to, but it's definitely not a natural thing for me to do. And so with something like this happening, I kind of just shut out. I was like, I am just kind of, I can't do, I can't do this. I can't do the social media. I can't do the YouTube. I just, I need to have answers. I need to take this in on my own as a family and deal with it. So basically back to the whole blood work thing. I, we had to figure out when I got the CMV. So I either got the CMV before I was pregnant or while I was pregnant. And it becomes a problem for the baby if you got it while you were pregnant. So basically my levels had come back both positive <laughs> that I was immune, which is I've had it. I could have had it before I was pregnant, but also that I had it. So they could have tested it and I was on like the tail end of it and I got it while I was pregnant or I very easily could have gotten it before I was pregnant and it just flared up. So we had to do more testing. <laughs> so when I found out I got CMV, my OB sent me straight to a high risk doctor here in Austin and the maternal fetal medicine here and I got an ultrasound done on our little baby girl to just see if things were okay. Um, since both things were coming back positive and every single test was just not coming back great. And so we did, I went in that day. She sent me in that day, I went in and she looked perfect. Nothing was wrong with her. Typically, it's about a 50-50 chance that a baby will look perfectly fine or will have stuff. It just kind of depends. It's not really like a very accurate known thing if the baby's okay, but she did look perfect. Clues that they look for if a mother has been infected with CMV for a baby is either low birth weight or a smaller head. Um, they also look for calcium spots in the brain, the heart, the kidneys. She truly, there was nothing there, no spots. Her head was perfect, her heart was perfect, everything looked great. Her birth weight or her weight right now is literally 50th percentile. She's completely average. I'm on track to have like a seven pound and a half baby. So just completely average, which was such great relieving news but we still hadn't found out if, when I had gotten the CMV. So we still needed to figure that out. Um, I was talking to the doctor and he said, we're gonna test you for that, for your different levels. And if you're wondering how you get CMV, it's actually extremely common. 50% of the population will get CMV in their lifetime. You very well could have CMV in your system and just not know it. And yeah, so it's super, super common. It's actually typically transmitted to pregnant women or to people in general through little toddlers actually. So when you go to like play group or 
um, library story time or things where you take your toddler in public places, they can become carriers and give it to you. So right away we knew exactly how I got it. I have an 18 month old daughter. Her name is Zara. She's actually 19 months now. And yeah, so we knew we got, I got it from her sadly. So from somewhere, that's how I got it. Anyways, that was a little off topic, but that's how you get CMV. And I remember talking about that with him and he was like, yep, there we go. But we're still need to test you for when you, when you got it. So we went and did that. I did that lab work that day. It took three weeks, three weeks for that lab work to come back. So long. And then this is where things get a little very, very uneasy for us is I get a call at like eight o'clock in the morning from my high risk doctor. And I just knew like my heart sank. I'm like, this is not, this is not good. And he, he basically told me, he's like, do you have a couple minutes to talk? I'm like, yes. Uh, I don't want to be hearing from you right now. I wanted it to be that I got the CMV before I was pregnant and it wasn't going to be a big deal and everything was going to be fine. We're going to use this on a scale of 100 to determine whether or not when I got CMV. Now, if it was a... So basically when I got the blood test, I received a number. Now, if my number was above 60, that means I got it before I was pregnant. Awesome. That would have been great. <laughs> I mean, it's extremely low risk. Baby is totally fine. It just the risk of having anything wrong with my child is like anybody else's. Now, if it was below 60, that means I got it while I was pregnant. Now, if my number was below 60, that means I got it during my pregnancy. And then if my number was below 30, that means I would need to go straight into get into an amniocentesis and test to see like we were looking at like I'm very now very high risk like something's wrong with the baby like something's gonna be happening that's not good and my number was an 18 so very very low and the doctors were very very concerned as was I. And so he had called me that morning. He let me know. He explained those exact same things to me. And he says, I need you in today for an amniocentesis. If you do not know what an amniocentesis is, an amniocentesis is where they draw, they take a needle, put it into your stomach, and they draw out the amniotic fluid and they test it for whatever they're testing for. Mine was for CMV. So he said, we need you in today as soon as possible. And I was like, okay, honestly, crying on the phone, very upset, clearly just like emotionally, like, oh my gosh, like what is wrong with, something's gonna be wrong with my baby. Like the, this is my worst nightmare, any mother's worst nightmare. And especially with my number being so low, it's like, uh, what? what am I gonna, like, I mean, our chances, like, of her being okay, just uh, keep getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. I'm like, this is crazy. And so, now, what happens to a baby if they are infected with CMV? Basically, 90% when babies are born, that are affected with CMV while in utero are born completely and perfectly fine. It's over time is when there are problems that arise. So within the first six months is their hearing goes. So that would mean our daughter would be deaf. And if they don't catch the CMV in time, and get like antiviral treatments, she would be blind and then eventually her sight would go 
and then other mental developmental disabilities like autism, seizures, the list goes on. You can look it up if you want to. I've already looked it up months ago, told myself I'd never look it up again because I didn't want I didn't I didn't want to have to know or think about it until I was confirmed of what was going to be happening. Um, but in the moment, the saddest part for me was thinking about my daughter and watching her lose her hearing. Her hearing my voice, knowing my voice as a baby, and then it's slowly slipping away. And even though things are totally fine, which I'm gonna get into, it was like, it's still this like, wow. It, it's very, it was so sad to me, like to think she would have known my voice for a period of time and then I would have to watch it go away and she would never hear, like hear my voice say, I love you. Like it just was so heartbreaking to me and I was very scared. Not even like scared, I just, I just was so sad and he discussed this with us um, while we were, uh, my high risk doctor discussed this with us um, after, before we got the amnio while we were at the doctor's office and I just was like, this is so crazy. Those are the conditions that can arise if your baby is affected with CMV while in the womb. And that is what we were dealing with. We are like, oh my gosh. So CMV is rampant in me. I have it. I got it while I was pregnant. And I was very freak much freaking out. And I go and get the amniocentesis. If you haven't had an amniocentesis before, it's not like the funnest thing ever. It's actually, I just remember it feeling very like intense in the room. Like I'm laying down. This was just done at the maternal fetal medicine office. And I remember I like kind of put my arm up like this while I was laying down. I held on to my husband's hand like this cause it's pretty like, it's pretty uncomfortable. It's, it hurts. And the doctor's right here to do the amniocentesis to use the needle. I've got a nurse over here with an ultrasound and then another nurse who was watching the ultrasound as well. And basically what it feels like is they're sticking a needle into you, but you can feel it hit your uterus and your uterus freaks out <laughs> and is not happy. So it feels like a labor contraction and it hurts. It's not fun. And also just, it was more so, I think for me, adrenaline. And I'm like, I was very nervous, honestly, the whole day for, for this moment. Like it was very quick though. It was probably, it was probably only 30 seconds to 45 seconds. It was really quick. To me, it felt like a lifetime because it was happening to me. And it just felt very tense in the room. I was very tense. I, was, I mean, I was as relaxed as I possibly could be. They like put this like iodine stuff all over my stomach to like sterilize it and all that sorts. Stick the needle in, get the sample, take the needle out, they're done. It was really quick. My uterus was pretty ticked off, which is extremely common. That is what happens. I mean, yeah, like, your uterus is mad, you're like, it's like, what are you doing? Like, I'm here to protect the baby. Like, why are you invading this space? So my uterus was upset for the rest of the day and my doctor just said to take it easy. Just don't do anything extra and just relax. You're gonna feel crampy, some abdominal pain. And, and there was like a list of things that are very common. And then he told me the things that like, if this is happening, come in whatever to call me. But everything went really smoothly. By the next day, I was completely fine. I was still a little sensitive even into the next day, but like 24 hours later, I mean, it hadn't even been 24 hours later. So I just, yeah, I just kept it easy for 
the rest of the day and the next and was totally fine and haven't had any issues since at all. And my doctor said that it was gonna take about a week for the results to get back and I'm like, okay, okay. A week is a long time to just be like twiddling my thumbs. Like, when are we gonna find out? I just wanna know that my daughter is okay because basically what the amniocentesis was testing for was if the CMV was in my amniotic fluid. And we had to know because that was either like, she's gonna be deaf or she's not gonna be deaf. And the risk is, oh, the baby's risk is just as much as anyone, any other healthy baby. She's completely fine. That week was truly the week from emotional hell like I completely stepped back from everything I cried every day thinking about it because I thought of like my daughter losing her hearing and watching it and all of those things I mean it's very natural as humans to think that way and especially as a hormonal pregnant woman also that as well and I my family and I, we're, we are very religious. We believe in Jesus Christ. We are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I am proud to be a member and I am grateful for the knowledge that I have of Christ and his atonement because without it, it was the only way that I could have possibly survived that week. I was so humbled this, the whole experience was very humbling, but that particular week, I just felt so stripped and so vulnerable, so humbled, so like, just so low and I had to have Christ's strength to be able to make it through each day and I am so grateful for my husband as well who was extremely positive and very supportive of how I was feeling and he had great confidence that things were going to be okay and I did too there was something in I mean I had a lot of hope that everything was going to be fine and faith that everything was going to be fine if it went honestly either way. And that's how my husband felt as well. Like it doesn't change anything. But if for me, it was like, if there is a chance that my baby is gonna be completely fine, I'm gonna take it. Like I'm gonna run with it. You know, in your life, when you go through trials, there are some that are bigger and smaller and whatever. And I would say this was a pretty big trial in my life. It was very difficult. And, but I remember just feeling like this one is so different from any other trial that I've ever had. And I remember just trying to think of it and I was actually talking to a friend of just like how I was feeling and my thoughts on this. And she, I just was like, it's so different because it's, I'm praying for someone else, like truly begging for someone else rather than for me, like mend my broken heart help me get through this breakup or whatever it is help me overcome it was i would do any i truly i was like god i'll do anything i'll do anything i'm begging for her for her health for her protection for her strength and my friend had said well it's kind of like the savior and how he is towards us i mean think of when we sin or our hearts are broken we aren't perfect but he is and he turns to heavenly father and is like forgive her don't you see? Don't you understand? Let me explain. Let me. Let me be the one to take on 
that sin, that heartbreak, that pain for her. And if I just, I felt so close to him and felt like I learned so much about Christ during this time of who he really is and how much he really loves us. And to think like, we still don't even understand, we can't even comprehend the love that he has for us and the way he feels about us and the things that he truly would do for us. But I just, I felt very close to that. Like just very, like wow, I, I'm getting a taste of how he feels. And it was incredible. It was an amazing experience and I wouldn't take it back for anything. I feel very strongly that that is one of the many, but the biggest lesson that I learned through this situation and I am so grateful for this experience and all of the lessons it has taught me. I mean, my husband and I have talked for hours honestly about it. He's so great <laughs> because I honestly needed to be the one to talk about it and how I felt. But of just all the lessons that we have learned. And I remember a week later, I got a call in the afternoon and I just knew I just knew and it was the nurse that had called me and I was like I've never been so grateful to hear a nurse's voice <laughs> and she was like she's like Dana you have this is a miracle your body is a rock star. <laughs> she says, you've got a rock and placenta because there's no CMV in my amniotic fluid, in my uterus, there's nothing. Which is crazy because with my low, low number, I got it while I was pregnant. How would my, I never had CMV before I was pregnant. Like how would my placenta know how to create an antibody to protect my baby from it. I mean, it's crazy. It's truly is a miracle. And I really do feel like God played a major hand in that. And I just felt so incredibly relieved and so grateful. I just fell to my knees in gratitude and prayer and I just hugged my little girl that is here, Zara. And I just, yeah, I have a very grateful heart. And truly that experience has changed my life forever. I will never look at my children the same and or life the same, to be honest. And even though it was a long few months and a really long week and just of so much of unknown and uncertainty and disappointing news, I truly would do it all over again. And I'm grateful for the experience. I'm grateful I've been able to share it with you today. I'm grateful for all of your support and your love that you have sent over the last few months wondering where I've been. You know, I just kind of like disappeared. <laughs> but I hope to come back. I plan to come back with more weekly updates. I am in my third trimester now and I'm 30 weeks pregnant and I'm just so grateful to be able to say that my daughter is perfectly healthy, that she is perfectly fine, and that her risk of anything is the same risk as any other healthy baby and I just feel extremely blessed and yeah I really I really do feel so blessed
Well, I know that this is a long video, so I'm going to go. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you are all extremely understanding of our situation and why I've been gone. I appreciate you and all of your kind and loving messages. If you have any other questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it <laughs> and subscribe to my channel. I plan to start filming again and sharing with you this pregnancy journey. I have lots of planned videos. I wanna show you guys the things that I've been getting for baby girl number two and everything. So subscribe, like this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.